This Monday, August 15th, is the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Because it falls on a Monday, it is not a holy day of obligation. However, we will still have Masses at 6 a.m., 8 a.m., and 12.05 p.m. The Mothers of Grace meeting this, this Tuesday, beginning at 6.30 p.m. in the Victory Annex, will be a presentation by Father Kirby Hilavati on the Paschal Mysteries as a pattern for our spiritual life. Our Lady of Victory's big tickets are available for purchase by going to the OurLadyVictory.org school website or can be bought at the OLV school or parish offices or from any of the advisory council members. The second collection is for the St. Vincent de Paul Society as we assist them in serving the less fortunate in our community. Thank you for your generosity. As a kind reminder, we ask that you turn your cell phones to silent. Good morning, and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of Victory as we celebrate the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. As our hearts give thanks to God for the gift of rain this day, we begin our prayer as always acknowledging the mercy of God, whose mercy extends to all people. We begin as always acknowledging our need for God's mercy, that we are sinners in need of forgiveness. We take a moment to call to mind our sins and pray for God's healing grace to rain down upon us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words for what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my thoughts, through my thoughts, through my most grievous thoughts. Therefore, I ask the blessing of the universe, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, 
Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In those days, the princess said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in this city and all the people by speaking such things to them. He is not interested in the welfare of our people, but in their ruin. King Zechariah answered, he is in your power for the king could do nothing with them. And so they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Prince Malchiah, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud, and Jeremiah sank into the mud. Ebed-Melech, a court official, went there for the palace and said to him, My lord king, these men have been at fault, and all they have done to the prophet Jeremiah, casting him into the cistern. He will die of famine on the spot, for there is no food in the city. Then the king ordered ebed Malik the Cushite, to take three men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. 
Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided three against two, and two against three. A father will be divided against his son, and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter, and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, so persevere in running the race that lies before us and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. The second reading from the letter to the Hebrews offers an image that has been strong for Christians throughout the generations Keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Know that we have a cloud of witnesses that has gone before us and be part of the cloud of witnesses here on this earth. Today, August 14th, is a feast day on the Catholic calendar for one of our witnesses, one of our saints. His name was St. Maximilian Kolbe. St. Maximilian was a Catholic priest. He was a priest during World War II when Nazis were rounding up Jews and sometimes Christians as well into Holocaust camps. 
where St. John Paul II would write later, this was the closest we've ever had to the fire of hell on earth. The evil going on in the Holocaust camps. St. Maximilian Kolbe was a priest, a Catholic priest, dedicated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, encouraging people to pray for the conversion of the world, for even the conversion of our enemies. He was rounded up in a Holocaust camp. He was set to be exterminated and killed along with the Jews who had been persecuted by the Nazis. St. Maximilian Kolbe, heart purified by contemplation of God with Mary, the true story is he offered his life in exchange for one of his Jewish brothers and sisters. He said, if you're going to kill these men here, take my life, I don't have a family. This man's got children. The purified heart offered his life that another man could live. St. John Paul II, in writing on the day in which he declared him a saint, said in the midst of hell on earth, the power of Christ prevailed. God's mercy in the heart that has compassion on others. The great witness of St. Maximilian Kolbe in that horrible camp during World War II. Now we have a group uh, of men and women in our diocese who have accepted a call to serve in prisons today. Not as evil as the Holocaust camps, yet men and women who need the mercy of Jesus Christ as much as anyone else. And these men and women as well have accepted as their saint they dedicate to, Saint Maximilian Kolbe. I'm going to be able to celebrate a mass at the Stevenson unit in Cuero at the end of a Kolbe retreat. There'll be dozens of men, Spanish and English. Sometimes the mass is in Spanish. And they will be served by Jesus Christ in our midst. In the midst of all the judgments and condemnations that our world offers, there'll be people from our church, our body of Christ, who say the mercy of God endures forever. The mercy of God is with you. I bring you the name of Jesus, which has all power within it. Today, we pray for our prison ministers and our prison chaplains thanking God for their ministry and what they do. And as we reflect on the cloud of witnesses, the saints that we honor that have gone before us, we know there are saints in our midst today who take care of God's children, especially those who may feel abandoned, may feel lost. So today is a day for our diocese in which we can honor the ministry that's being done in our prisons, the Stevenson Unit in Cuero, our county jails, and the different counties in our area. And as we do so, i like to share with our faithful. Stevenson Unit has a mass every week. Ministers in Spanish and English. It has times for confession and prayer in the rosary. Offers retreats. This next year, they've got on my schedule Holy Thursday that the bishop can go and wash the feet of the prisoners. In a way, they witness the love of Jesus and the mercy that extends to all people. So as I invite all of our diocese to pray today and to support those who take part of the prison ministry, 
I pray and thanks to God for the cloud of witnesses that has gone before us, the cloud of witnesses that encourages us today, and the cloud of witnesses in the future that brings about God's mercy and love each day. Now, as I conclude my words, you may look around and see some people in red shirts. I'd ask if you could please stand. Those of the Colby ministry, please stand. And is there anyone else with Colby ministry here? I'm just recognizing the ones who wore the red shirts. Anyone else with Colby ministry? Uh, I want us to particularly pray for you. Uh, I know, and I'll have to say, uh, I got to tell you, we're, we're part of the church. Sometimes they need financial support. <laughs> so if, if sometimes you can help out financially, they need financial support for their mission. But thank God for what you do uh, for your ministry each day. Be lifted up by the hearts of our prayers for you today. Lord God, you sent St. Maximilian Kolbe into the depths of evil and human suffering to show that the power of your love always prevails. We thank you for these men and women who continue your ministry of love and of mercy to those most in need of thy mercy. We pray for those to whom they minister, that their hearts may be turned in compassion and love, seeking forgiveness, reconciliation, and hope. We pray for all who work within our prison system, for our guards, our chaplains, all those who take care and work for our safety. Pray, O oh Lord, your Holy Spirit be spread throughout, that you may be praised, and we may know you at each and every moment. We ask your blessing upon these, our brothers and sisters, that they may have courage and walk in the truth each and every day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Let us now stand together, and as the cloud of witnesses on earth, giving strength for our brothers and sisters, let us with one heart, one spirit, and one voice profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, the God from God from God. Consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was his Lord and the Virgin Mary, and his name came in. For our sake, he is the Father and the Father. He suffered death. With confidence in the victory of the mercy that flows from the heart of Jesus, we now bring prayers for the world in which we need, for God's merciful love to prevail. For Pope Francis and all bishops, may they be blessed with the courageous leadership to preach the gospel always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For statesmen and politicians, May they see disagreements as opportunities for honest and constructive dialogue for the benefit of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
for our families who are divided. May they find comfort and peace in the embrace of an all-merciful God as they cope with strained relationships. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us, that we may persevere in running the race while keeping our eyes fixed on our Savior and Redeemer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For beneficial rainfall in our area, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the family of Julian Zarate, Damian Alvarez, Vincent Reedy, may they be consoled by the Lord in their grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the people of the parish and for all the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the needs listed in our parish intention book and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd of our souls, your mercy endures forever. Send forth your Holy Spirit to give us courage to stand for the truth. And we pray in your most holy name, Jesus Christ, for you are our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Please pray with me, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, my brother David, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, O Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.